Hey champions, well here we go, we've got the shopping list from uh, Miss Lisa for our food. We're just going to head into the local shopping centre and see what we can get for our glamping camping tour. Let's go. There we have it, uh, a little bit more than was on the shopping list, but uh, yeah, I'm sure we'll survive. Right, yeah, I just got back from the shop, uh, two days worth of food for our glamping camping. Um, we'll get it together and we'll go through it. So one, two, three, there you go, voila. Right, yeah, let's just go through what we're gonna take for a couple of days. Probably not the standard food that you'd take away uh, if you are roughing it, but uh, we're going glamping, maybe camping. Got our uh, normal bits of water, our uh, meats for a couple of meals, you know, a bit of potatoes, a bit of salad, some yogis for the morning, snacky snacks just in case the uh, little ones come up uh, for a visit, just your normal eggs and cheese for your bacon and eggs in the morning. Um, yeah, the old bottled milk. Sorry. The old contained milk and then we've got um, some stuff for lunches and of course just the simple snacky snacks right here drinks from miss lisa drinks from mr blade and then obviously my favorite uh my drinks for the muller so yeah two days worth of food let us know what you take when you go camping because uh yeah um i think we've got a little bit more on the list but anyway we'll see how we go we'll show you how we pack all this into a small 50 litre fridge and a small 50 litre container. Let's give it a go. Okay, so uh, Tetris done. Let's uh, have a look. The water's done. Oh dear. All the gear, no idea. Lanceland is a small fishing and tourist town 127 kilometres north of Perth, Western Australia. It is within the Shire of uh, Gingin at the end of the Lanceland Road and a few kilometres away is the scenic highway, the Indian Ocean Drive, State Route 60. The town has a permanent population of over 600 and swells to 2,500 during the peak holiday period around Christmas and New Year's. Lanceland was gazetted in the 1950s and was originally named Wangari, the Aboriginal word for fish. The area was renamed in 1953 after a request from the Jinjin Road Board. The Australian military has used the Lanceland Defence Training Area, which is to the north of the town, since the 1940s. Kite surfing and windsurfing are popular in the ocean off Lanceland and sandboarding and riding on the dune buggies and motorbikes and four wheel drives are very popular in the dunes and beaches behind the town. When staying in Lanceland, Snack Snack Adventures always camps out at the experienced Lanceland Holiday Park. Famous for its aqua beaches, epic sand dunes, windsurfing and laid back vibe, the Lanceland Caravan Park is the perfect spot for the relaxing weekend or a beautiful extended holiday. You can choose from a range of two bedroom cabins, fully powered caravan bays or unpowered tent sites which are a stone's throw from the stunning beaches of Lancelot. Rightio, hey champions, well we got the uh, 2.5 uh, Ironman 4x4 awning. What we're going to do, we're going to um, install this tent. This is a two-way fly screen tent, fits this area. Never used it before, so it's going to be interesting. 
Um, just for the bedroom, I'll show you how we're going to do that. So we're getting the rock and roll bed made up, but obviously Lisa and I like to sleep in the van. Normally we pull this chair out and then we have it flat, but I thought we'd leave it in and we'll try the alternative. So just turn that around. Comfy that is. Okay. Inshallah. And then uh, Lisa will have her drop down TV. <laughs> Delicious? Yep. I'm glad enjoying this tea. Morning time. What a view. After our yummy breakfast of bacon and egg wraps, we went down to the beach foreshore and watched a couple of the old fishermen come in their boats and put them up onto the tractor trailers and then a few of the lads out there mucking around on their jet skis. We decided to go and have a look at the sand dunes and check out some of the uh, 4x4s and the quad bike riding and we also had a look at the dunes ourselves. Then we returned back to the camping grounds and we chilled out, read books, enjoyed the sunshine and we watched a DVD, Ghostbusters. Um, dinner tonight will be our go-to meal of uh, chorizo risoni. The chorizo risoni meal was our staff go-to meal um, when we were going out to red camps. Super easy, it's one pan, unbelievably delicious. Um, and well worth just taking a little bit of extra time to do some of your prep. So um, I guess the things that we need, some chorizo, doesn't have to be fancy pants chorizo, some garlic, 
an onion, um, some lemons. You use the zest and an actual lemon wedge. And I promise you, it is a key part of the recipe. Do not make this recipe without having your lemons. Um, some cheese. I use spinach rather than silver beet. It's easier to find in the shops. Um, risoni. I was only introduced to risoni when I found this recipe. Um, for those of you like me who did not know, <laughs> risoni is pasta shaped like rice. <laughs> so it's actually found in the pasta se um, section at the shops, not the rice section like I spent 25 minutes looking for it the first time I tried to find it. Um, and some cherry tomatoes. Can use tin tomatoes um, if you are stuck and can't get fresh produce. I prefer fresh when I can have it. Um, chopping board knife, little grater that we found at the Lancelin op shop today for 50 cents, I think it was. Super stoked to have found that. And one big pan it's pretty much all you will need. So I'm just going to do some prep for some of the vegetables um, but this recipe actually can be found in Sarah and Keelan Travel's e-cookbook and we'll pop a link up to that um, they have shared that it is one of their favorites Sarah and I used to always have this meal and I have fond memories and think of her every single time I make it so check it out um, but I'll just do some of the prep first and then we'll come back This is Snacky Snack Adventure version because it is a little bit different every time you make it. Is that why? Um, because your ingredients are different. Sometimes I've cooked it on a trangia. It's different on a trangia because that takes a little bit longer um, to cook. Oh, jeez. What happened? <laughs> I'm so glad I was. <laughs> It's okay guys, we're fine. <laughs> Nothing to see here. <laughs> I was just in my little scullery kitchen and um, it's fine, it's cool. There's nothing I can't clean up later. Because you're a shoe chef. No? <laughs> uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect, it's fine. As long as it tastes good, right? As long as the end result is what you were looking for, doesn't matter how you got there. Again, don't at me for any of my <laughs> techniques. Yeah. All the gear, some idea. <laughs> All the gear, no idea. That's our hashtag for a reason. So just a little bit of garlic. Um, Please heard that you were cooking. Hey. They saw your illegal cooking technique. Oh. They're coming by because they know how good this is going to end up. Is that right? You all joke. This is, it has its own legend status on Outdoor Red Camp. Any what? staff member that has come to Outdoor Red Camp will vouch for that. I know students that will vouch for it. Students will vouch for it because they smell it cooking when they're cooking their little two minute noodles that they still choose to bring on camp. <laughs> Maybe a steak. Sometimes a steak, yes. And then we just need some lemon zest. Oh, it's for the cooking, not for the Corona. Oh, look, if you've got Coronas, you can buy as many lemons as you like. You ingredients you got how many people could you serve so this serving is probably the four person serving and to be honest a lot of this is just um this is just how we've cooked it so many times that this amount of ingredients cooks uh, sorry feeds four sometimes six people you can have multiple servings from it um it's quite a hearty meal so um, yeah, this serving size is probably four. We do have someone joining us for dinner tonight, so there will be more than enough for them when they get here. 
the lemon zest, like I said, the most important part of the meal. And I think, without looking at my messy bit, oh, oh. what's that? Vegetable stock, one ingredient that I forgot. Um, you can use the liquefied version or you can use um, the cubes. So in a serving for four, you use three cubes. Um, in a serving for two, you use one and a half. So um, super handy to have them with you. And how do you mix it? In the water, in the pan, you crumble it in. Like yeah, it depends on which brand they are. Some of them um, are quite moist and you can squish them and then add them to the water. I feel like I've used these ones before and these are the crumbly ones, so you can actually crumble Drink them in. Over. Yeah, um, in with the water and the risoni when we get to that part. So um, I feel like I've got everything ready. In the original recipe, you can add thyme, um, rosemary, and a pinch of chili flakes. That's actually really good, but we didn't get any today. So there are other little bits and pieces you can add to it. But I think we're ready to put the first bit on. So as I said before, I have cooked this on a trangia before and it's absolutely doable. And that's the beauty of it being a one pan recipe. Um, it's obviously just a little bit quicker on one of the cooktops. I didn't pack some of the camping stuff today, so I will be improvising <laughs> with the utensils that I have available to me. So we've just put a little bit of oil in the pan and our favorite garlic infused oil because you can never have too much garlic. So the first thing we're gonna add is the chorizo. some rogue bits of onion in there but that's okay delicious so we want to get the chorizo nice and brown um, golden whatever descriptor you would like to use for it Cooked is good. <laughs> Just not crunchy. <laughs> Just not, um, yeah, covered in a coating of... Carcinogenic. Carcinogenic. <laughs> that's, yeah, you've probably gone a little bit too far if you, if that's what your chorizo ends up looking like. So just let it cook for a wee bit. But... I just, I like it a wee bit browner before I move on to the next step because it just gives it a nice little bit of crunchy in the recipe. Almost there. Almost? Almost. Yeah, I can see them starting to really crisp up. I like a little bit of crispiness to it. <laughs> so the cherry tomatoes in for a couple of minutes until they soften first. That tomato has softened up, um, so I'm going to add the onion and the garlic. Oh, I wish you could smell that. Looks delicious. 
one of the things about this meal is the end product <laughs> sometimes doesn't look fantastic. It depends on how much cheese you put in it, um, how soggy the risoni may have gone. Um, the risoni is meant to be al dente um, because it is pasta essentially. Um, so the end result <laughs> doesn't always look fantastic, but I promise you it tastes incredible. Couple more minutes. So while there's only a couple more minutes to go on that, we add the lemon zest in. <clears throat> now, like I was saying, the lemon zest is the key element to this whole dish and I I can't explain why, but it absolutely is. Just having that hint of lemon in there just sets it apart from just being a meat and pasta dish, essentially. Um, there have been a couple of times where I've added a little bit of extra lemon juice into it um, when the risoni is in, just for a little bit more kick, but that is just personal preference. Okay, so this is at a point where the next part is is to add your risoni and your water and stock. Um, like I said, I am just going to wing this. Obviously, you put lots of risoni in, it's going to make it a, a chunkier meal, um, but you also risk it being gluggy because it is pasta. So we're just going to wing it. So I'll just So that just get some heat through it. Yep, just to get some heat through it. Um, just before we start adding the water. Um, I don't know, it also just helps it kind of absorb some of that oil um, that's still sitting there and Very give right. it a bit of coating in the flavor as well. So again, I am just winging it with the amount of water. Um, so I'm sure. You don't want a slushy, but if you do end up with a slushy, just add more risoni. Ah. Um, so basically what you want to do with the risoni, like I said before, al dente is the preferred um, cooking time for it or how it's meant to kind of taste in terms of the crunchiness. Um, but you just go with whatever you're doing. So I kind of use the absorption method a little bit as well mm -hmm. and just kind of leave it like that but i am confident that the actual um the actual measurements will be in the recipe in sarah keelan travels e-cookbook so we'll just let that simmer and kind of do its little thing i will crumble the Oh, these are the nice crumbly ones. So crumble the stock into it. So if not, you can mix that with your the water that you pour in? Yeah, or you can use the liquefied stock and yep. use that as your water. Yep. Um, so it's just, yeah, that becomes your liquid base, basically. Um, again, like I said, it, it is a little bit different each time you cook it. I have accidentally um, packed chicken <laughs> stock cubes um, on one can. It was fine. It was fine. <laughs> Tasted a wee bit more saltier than it usually does, um, but it wasn't the end of the world. And I was the only person that actually knew. I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> Hungry, people will eat anything. Hungry people will eat anything, yes. Normally you see chefs like with a little spoon tasting it, but you seem to I like smell, the smell, taste it. Yeah, the only time I'll taste it is when I think that the risoni is ready, just to make sure that it is. Um, 
I'm actually going to add a little bit more risoni and a little bit more water um, because we do have someone else here beef it up. for dinner with us and I just want to make sure that everyone gets a good, beef. A good serving. So again, that may um, impact <laughs> the final look of the meal. But yep. again, it's still going to taste, taste amazing. It's all good. Come in. <clears throat> okay, so the risoni is at a point where I'm cool with it. Um, so our next part is just dumping in a whole bag of spinach. So we've got some greenery. Um, one of the recipes that you might find online talks about using um, silver beet, but like I said, that's not always readily available. Um, spinach is a lot easier to come by. So just mix that in. I've turned it down a wee bit as well um, so that I don't burn it. But we just want to wilt the spinach and get it mixed in and then there is pretty much only one more step one more ingredient to add and that's where it might start getting a little bit messy and not looking so cute okay so just like that it looks amazing I'm just gonna double check Okay, now this next part is where it's going to start looking not so great. Um, it is the addition of the cheese. And this can be personal preference. The cheese um, obviously adds a little bit of creaminess to it, so you do want to add it in. Um, but how much cheese you actually add is totally up to you. gonna pop that to the side for a second. I'm gonna turn it off now because there's enough heat throughout the meal to kind of heat up that cheese and let it do its thing. I honestly wish you could smell this. It is delightful. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. That actually looks pretty decent. I'm pretty happy <laughs> with how it looks. Um, again, don't have my scoop to serve it up. So we're just going to make do with what we have. Don't forget to add your wedge of lemon. Put the lemon over it. What do you reckon, mate? <laughs> what do you reckon? Good, it? Oh, yum the cheesy goodness and because it's pasta based it is like super super filling so if you've got an activity um, on that you need to kind of carb load for um, this is actually a really great meal to have the night before as well it really fills you up Morning champions, well it's our uh, last morning of our two day glamping uh, here at uh, Lancelin. So we're at the Experience uh, Lancelin Holiday Park which is uh, fully equipped. It has uh, the chalets for families, heated swimming pool, kids playground area and then uh, non-powered sites and powered sites. Uh, also has an awesome um, toilet and shower facility and a uh, kitchen area where you can, uh, like a communal kitchen, you can do your cooking and barbecue up there. But the best thing is we can bring our uh, fur babies. 
So Al's had a great time here. As long as you keep them on the lead, and you might need to pay a bond, but uh, check with the staff at the uh, front gate. The staff here are so helpful. The uh, place is clean. Uh, we like coming here because we're right next to the uh, beach where we can uh, do some of our uh, drone stuff and Blake, Blake can do his photography. Also on site there's a laundry uh, place where you can uh, clean your fish and uh, there was a little uh, cafe caravan uh, right at the front. Opposite um, the uh, Experience Holiday uh, Park is a uh, cafe which is uh, well renowned. Um, great cakes and uh, pasties and pies. Uh, sometimes when they're busy there might be a little bit of a wait uh, but a lot of people tend to go there and get their uh, morning coffees. So uh, Lancelin uh, itself uh, is a fishing, uh, cray fishing uh, settlement. It's quite touristy uh, as well. The tourists come up here because of the uh, big sand dunes. Uh, out on the sand dunes we had a look yesterday. Uh, they've got some extreme sports where you can go on the um, sand boards, the uh, buggies, uh, four wheelers uh, and then you can also I, th I think they still do that big bus um, monster uh, thing up there so uh, we'll leave the links uh, down below for this uh, caravan park because the uh, services are amazing the grounds are beautiful and uh, the people are very friendly uh, also give us a like and subscribe eh? we've got people following us we've got a lot of people on our social medias uh, not a lot of subscribers, so as you know, you need the subscribes and the likes and the hearts to make it work. But um, it's been a great uh, holiday with uh, Miss Lisa, fur part uh, Al, and our first son, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we'll, uh, I, I guess we'll see you uh, on our uh, next episode. Time for some um, breakfast. Breakfast of Champions. Alright guys, see you champions. Peace out.